Oh, so it's happened, huh? Your lady friend, your girlfriend, maybe a hookup from some time ago. Got in touch with you to let you know that she's been late on her period, she's with child, she's keeping it, and you're about to be a daddy. Now, maybe you weren't intending on this. Maybe you're feeling strong strikes of fear and even panic rushing through you. You should. There's loads to be terrified of. Most of it not even remotely resembling what you might be thinking. But it also is a good thing. Because hopefully it means you're about to take something more seriously than you've ever taken anything before. This is a message to the unexpected fathers awaiting the end of the nine-month wait and the beginning of the 18-year cycle. You're in for a hell of a ride. Trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't be lies. So hey everyone, welcome back once again. So if there's one thing that people who know a bit about me know, it's that the centerpiece of my life, the central source of pride and joy and fear and terror and worry and everything all in between, is my lovely daughter Quinn. Now, she's actually going to be ten in May. That's a full decade of fatherhood that I was never really altogether intending on being a part of, or altogether prepared for. So I decided that, over time, it would be good for me at some point to make this video. Basically, the kind of video I wish someone had made and that I could have watched beforehand, if only to put some of my panic at ease. Now, roughly ten years ago, or ten and a half years ago, depending on how you look at it, I was a much different creature. I was something of a creature of avarice, of hubris in many respects as well. I was a guy who was sort of a, a creature made of dreams, dreams that he had no idea how he was going to make happen. And once I found out that I was in for a, well, a little bundle of joy, I felt initially that I needed to kiss all of those goodbye. Now, at the time, I was sort of riding a wave gotten a new job out of a kitchen into a corporate call center, which though a lot of people rightly say is one of the worst places you can work in, it was a step up from being covered in flour and semolina for only $10 an hour. But there I was working a relatively nice job, had a nice apartment, decent car, dating left and right, everything was working out. Although I was just sort of spinning my wheels in terms of the broader ambitions I had, I was nevertheless feeling somewhat content and even arrogant in my contentment. Now, sure, plenty will say that I'm still an arrogant bastard, and that's probably not unfair. But it was when I was smacked with the reality that I was going to be a father that everything changed. Now, over the course of the nine months in between conception and birth, I was stricken with fear and panic on a nearly daily basis, believing that every one of the dreams I had, ranging from career ambitions in the political world up through travel throughout the U.S. and Europe, that all of those would need to be kissed goodbye because my freedom was about to puff away in a blast of smoke, blast away in a puff of smoke. You get what I'm saying. So there I was for nine straight months, utterly terrified, unsure of how I would survive, let alone unsure if I could be remotely anything resembling a decent father. And then it happened. She was born. And staring up at me with those icy blue eyes, all that panic melted away. Now, I'd find out later that this actually came from something of a neurochemical thing that happens when you first view your newborn child. It's a rush of endorphins. Uh, I've heard it said that it's a sort of a more primitive thing designed to keep us from eating the young, but that's a different matter altogether, I would say. But there she was, brand new, beautiful person, most beautiful thing I'd ever seen, and my terror got even deeper. Now, one of the best pieces of advice I got prior to the birth of Quinn, and prior to the uh, assuming of the roles of a father, came from the father of twins, who himself was rather consistently stressed out to an extraordinary degree. One of the things he told me, which really stuck with me, is that I was going to fuck it all up every step of the way. That nothing I would do would be right. That if I was the kind of guy who might um, spank or, uh, or, or uh, you know corporal punishment sort of thing with my children, well, then every time I did that, I would think to myself, well, I hit them too damn hard, that was straight up abusive. Or, if I should start to yell at them, that I would be too uh, angry or too loud or too aggressive with it. That everything I would do would be screwing up and scarring this child for life. 
And while I sat there trying to ponder why it would be that he was going to try and cheer me up or motivate me by telling me that I was going to do everything wrong, he followed it up by pointing out that if you feel this way consistently, then you're actually doing a good job. You're taking it so seriously that you are self-critical to a great degree that you would personally not be satisfied with anything short of perfection. Now, this has been the case with myself and many other men I know. Now, when I use the word men in the context of fathers, I do differentiate between those who simply knock up a girl, trot off, and maybe pay child support, or maybe just fuck clean off altogether. Those I don't really regard as men, per se, but more sort of immature man-children, if you will. This is because one of the central facets to being a man, which I learned over the course of my fatherhood, has more to do with stoicism and self-sacrifice, which, if you engage honestly in parenthood, you will discover is sort of a mainstay of your new humanity. And it's this new humanity which I feel is the thing to really focus on. If you are in the position where you are about to be a father but never expected to be, never maybe even wanted to be, but feel that compulsion within you to step up and do the right thing, well then that is the first step to really discovering what you're really made of. This is one of the more beautiful elements of being a parent. The worry, the gray hairs, the fear, the terror, the watching the world descend into madness and chaos and realizing that you have to craft this small child into an adult who's fit to function in that world, it is utterly terrifying. And yet you keep going forward and doing it. You take one step after another. And you do your absolute best, never completely satisfied with what you're doing, but promising yourself to consistently do better as you go along. What being a father has taught me, at least, is serious lessons in regards to patience, self-sacrifice, and what real values actually are. Comparing myself ten years ago, prior to the birth of my daughter, to consider how it was things such as uh, you know, healthy paychecks and a cushy job, a nice car, a sexy girlfriend, nice toys and all of this other shit. That this is what I felt mattered at the time. To where I am now, wherein the concern and forethought when it comes to what it is my daughter will grow up to be usually takes precedence over nearly any and every other thought. It really is a matter of learning how much you can value something external from yourself to the point where you will give up elements of your own life which you thought were indispensable. Now this might sound unfortunate. It might sound as though I'm telling you that your dreams of backpacking through Europe or bumming around the United States or uh, maybe going on tour as a performing musician or artist or something like that, that the reckless self-centered sort of nature which one can have a good time with the realizing they have no one to answer to but themselves and no one to provide for but themselves, that is in fact over. But it's not entirely over. Because here is the next part and the next sort of element that I discovered within fatherhood. It's the motivation to be the best self you can be. In addition to self-sacrifice, in addition to placing the needs and desires of another person well above your own without even thinking about it, there is also the matter of looking and reflecting upon oneself to realize that one is best when they are striving for the best results. This is to say, effectively, that you realize that as a father, you're no use to your child if you're going to simply get by. That perhaps that job at Walmart or McDonald's, that minimum wage gig that you got that you could get by on, maybe living with roommates, that these sorts of things, that it's simply not enough. And that whatever genuine dreams and ambitions you have, whatever sorts of uh, goals that you may have set for yourself in a real and more tangible way, the sort of thing you'd hoped you'd grow into being, well, then it's time to really take that seriously. And this was sort of one of the funny surprises I found to the unexpected fatherhood I fell into. It wasn't until Quinn that the dreams I had of doing things such as working in politics, writing professionally, as well as traveling and exploring things, and exploring different options in terms of what one could be and the directions and courses and paths that they could follow, it wasn't until she arrived that I had the slightest inclination to really go out and do it. Prior to her being in my life, in my mind, these sorts of goals and dreams and ambitions were always something far off on the horizon, something I'd get around to eventually, something perhaps that I'd find my way to at some point, but not now. 
It wasn't until she showed up and I realized that being a wage slave security guard, as I was at the time, simply wasn't going to cut it, that I took the steps necessary to begin following the dreams that I'd been cultivating this entire time. And the funny thing was, even though I enjoyed them and I felt so much success, or at least the sort of taste, the whiff of success coming down the pipeline as a result of pursuing these things, it wasn't for my satisfaction that I was doing them, as much as it was that I wished to genuinely build something of myself for her. You will find in your unexpected parenthood to come that you will become the best version of yourself you can possibly be so long as you dedicate yourself to doing it. It is a terrifying thing to consider. 18 to 20 years, which is actually more of a lifetime of having to worry about support and be there for another person. A sort of anchor, if you will, that will, to a certain extent, keep you in one or more places at a given time. As well as some of the other more unfortunate elements, especially if perhaps there's no defined relationship between yourself and the mother, and then the court gets involved. Which, I'll post a link here if you want to see more about that, I spent the better part of ten years in battling court. But even with that, all of the fear and the terror, the fact that the state, with incentives from the federal government, was more than eager to pursue myself and every other non-custodial father out there to maximize the amounts of support orders and the like that they could get. Even with all of the terror of being dragged into court under false accusation and having the system turned and geared against me, it was itself a source of motivation to remember that I was not fighting for myself, but rather I was fighting for her. It is a selfless and sacrificial nature that you must and will adopt, but it is not all negative. In fact, you will find a greater sense of pride if you are forced to sort of suffer through unfortunate circumstances, but realize that you're doing so for the benefit and protection of this small person who you cannot help but love more than life itself. There is a beauty to parenthood, something I would never trade for anything, and something which has led me to the greatest heights of my own life, simply by virtue of hoping that I might provide for, or better yet, impress my own child in years to come. So this has been sort of my rant and ramble on the virtues of unexpected fatherhood. If you are in the position where you are expecting a child that you weren't expecting altogether, stay calm and stay cool. There's plenty of time and plenty of reason to be absolutely terrified, and you'll find them as you go. But it takes a dedication, not only to the child, but to being the best man that you can be, that really brings the true rewards of this forward. Because, if nothing else, you will discover that your investment in this person takes away all sort of personal milestone markers you may normally use. In the course of your own life, as you look back on the chapters as they were defined by the relationships, jobs, experiences you have, those sorts of milestones will sort of fade away as the rapid and consistently evolving milestones of this little person become your new markers of time. And in this, you will find yourself hopefully, a bit like myself, ten years hence, wondering where the time went. So, thank you for sticking around with me. I hope this video does help someone down the line, as most of these are things that I really wish I had known walking into it. I wouldn't have been so petrified and terrified as I was had I known that the best version of me that would ever exist would come about as a result of this thing which terrified me to the core. It's going to be okay. Stay scared, but stay scared for the right reasons. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating, if you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken and stoop and build them up with worn out tools. 
If you can make one heap of all your winnings in whiskey on one turn of pitch and toss, and lose and start again in your beginnings, and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they're gone, and so hold on when there's nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. <laughs>